Welcome back, Sips of Success Podcast. We're here for another one. I am Cameron. This is my beautiful wife, Erin. Hey. How you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, what are we sipping on? This looks yummy. We are sipping on lemon ginger bombs. Of course, this it's is a, a mocktail. A mocktail because the lovely wife is is pregnant with my my beautiful baby in there. So cheers. Did we cheers? cheers? Oh no, sorry, I got right to it. I forgot. <laughs> That's terrible. Mm, it's good. It's yeah. very refreshing. Refreshing, I think. And uh, healthy, probably. Yeah, healthy, you know. Got to nourish. Minus nourish. the syrup. Um, It's the ginger, ginger syrup. syrup. It has sugar in there. Yeah, but, but, you know, I mean, a little sweet. You got to have some sweet Yeah, something. So. so what's in it? Um, It is lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Of course, fresh lemon juice. Uh, ginger syrup, which is just ginger, sugar, and water. Then there is uh, sparkling water that I topped it off with. Okay. And there's honey in there as well. Yum. Yeah. So. Cute. And then he did the dehydrated lemons. If you're not watching, the garnish is where it's at. I feel like dehydrated fruit just takes it the makes garnish it, up a notch. It, it for looks sure it makes so it luxe. Yeah. yeah. Like um, I know what I'm doing. You do. <laughs> okay. So this or that. Okay. Would you rather have extremely... Horrible breath, Ooh. or extremely horrible body odor. Dang, I know they're both terrible. That's horrible. Um, I'm uh, God dang. I know my answer, but I want to know what you say. <laughs> I don't even know. Like that's just that's that sucks. Um. I'm going to go with... And also, to know Cameron is to know he brushes his teeth like three times a day. Every time he eats something that has a lingering taste, he has to brush his teeth, water floss, yeah, just, regular floss, Listerine wash, um, <laughs> literally like a 10-step oral hygiene process, which is great, but I'm gonna go with, just to um, give some context. I'm going to go case. with like... Here's the thing, though. Like... Again, you didn't give your crazy stipulation, so I'm going to I'm going to go with body odor because I I, I really? can't stand the taste of. My thing is I I think <laughs> it's like can I do the lemon juice thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can your your body just you just stinks. you just stink yeah you just stink. <laughs> then I'm gonna go with bad breath because I don't got to okay, talk. Okay, because I'm like yeah. yeah I would just say well bad you gotta breath. start putting on your crazy stipulations because I'm like I'll do lemon juice. That ain't uh uh. <laughs> Right. Whatever you do, don't work. That's how bad right, your you body odor think. is. I'm going to just do bad breath then because I don't have to talk. Okay. I would say bad breath too because body odor, it just lingers. Like you walk past and you, and smell, you that. smell it. Yeah. Like it's just, ugh. Yeah. If Whereas, I need to talk to you, I'll talk to you on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Or you can just like, body odor just follows you wherever you go. Like yeah. your car will stink. Your Everything. Everything will stink. The walls in your, your yeah, house. Yeah. It's just. And it's just so unpleasant being around people who just purely stink. So I would say I would pick the bad breath. Yeah, I just want to And just constantly chew gum and hope that certain things can kind of contain it. Halitosis is steep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what your terrible <laughs> preference would be. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Uh, or do you want me to kick it off? I, yeah, you said you knew the topic. I don't even, I can't remember what you said. Okay. So, last week, we announced we're having a baby. Right, right, okay. We're very excited. Um, and we are the type of people who just don't accept the status quo. That's just how we are. So, we, I would say we weren't necessarily 100% like, yes, we're ready to have a kid. We're trying, like, all the things. However, we were at a point where we were like, if it happens, we're okay with it. Like, yeah. we're ready in that sense. So... I feel like when we say things like, um, when we say things like, our lives are gonna keep moving forward, or yeah. we are not stopping what we got going on because we have a child, right. or the baby needs to adapt to our lives, and you know, we're not like putting a halt based on the baby, right. People take that and they think that we don't understand that things change. That your life changes. Yes, that yeah. your life changes. That kids come in and they change your entire life. Right. 
So I just wanted to talk about some of those projections that aren't necessarily like specifically targeted toward us, but just like we love to travel. We love to, you know, we have busy lives. We are, we have a lot of fun. Like we do things. We're a very active couple in that regard. And people say things like, oh, you know, get it all out the way or, (laughs) you know, enjoy it while it lasts. Like things like that. Y'all doing it right. Right. Y'all doing it right. Basically y'all about to be done doing it right. Right. It's kind of like all of these negative connotations. They're not necessarily negative statements, but they have a negative undertone. Like, yeah. So I want to talk to you about that. Like what, how does that make you feel? Well, first of all, can you explain a little bit more of like what that means to you when, when we say we are not letting our lives come to a stop based on us having a baby? Um, I'll answer the the first part. You said, what does that mean when we say we won't let it stop? Yeah. Um, what that means to me is a child, us having a baby, like simply put, <laughs> means that the baby isn't stopping where we're going in life. It's just now the baby is also going to those places. And because they're going to those places, places as well, that means wherever they're going after we're going, it's going to be even bigger than where we were able to take them. Exactly. So that's how I look at it. Yeah. And when you, like when people say stuff like that, how does it make you feel? I feel like I, so I think that's why I wasn't too big on having kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Not to say, you know, that I wanted kids, but it's never been like, uh, yeah, I can't wait to have kids. I feel like because of the negative, um, I guess, spread of- Or undertone. Yeah, undertone that people give off as well. I'm like, I mean, having a kid is not that deep. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Like and and to some people it really may not be and I feel like to me I wouldn't consider it deep I could just consider it just a blessing like you know whether you have them or you don't like whatever y- your thing is um, but I feel like the negativity that is surrounded around having kids is probably why I once really like I mean I I couldn't care less basically is it fear I think is it fear of losing out on what you have because that no, was what so it was think, for me. I don't think it's a fear of losing out on what I have. I think it's a fear of, oh, I guess it is kind of that, but I think it's more of like, this is the worst challenge you can have in your life because that's what people make it seem like. Like to me, it's saying? just like okay. you having a kid is like the worst. I'm trying to figure out like, why did you have them then? Right. Like, do you not get what you're saying? Like my thing is, have you thought about what you're saying? And when you say it, how that sounds to others. Exactly. And to me, I'm like, well, why would I want a kid if this is how you actually feel? I see that you're smiling about it and you may not mean what you're saying in the way that it's coming out. But right. to me, I'm like, well, why It's would, like, yeah, it's this know? major juxtaposition because people in one breath say, oh my God, they're the best thing that can happen to you. And then in the other breath say like, you know. Really follow right after be that. Be ready, you know. Yeah. Like, it's gonna, everything's gonna change and every which I'm sure it does. But like, yeah. You know, we can't do X, Y, and Z now that we have kids or we just, you know, don't do things we still enjoy as much. Like I do, I think the difference is that people, what we have accepted for ourselves is that of course things are going to change. We are not like oblivious to the fact that a kid is going to come in and they're, they're going to demand a lot, a lot of attention, a lot of love, a lot of care. For those, especially the, during those younger baby toddler yeah. years, like we're not, we're not dumb for lack of better <laughs> words. Um, however, we're like, you know, we said like, oh, we want to go overseas more and like do more long distance traveling. At at this point, we're like, okay, we've done a good amount. Like we just did a big trip to France last year. Like we've done a lot of like great traveling over our time since we've been married and You know, at this point, we're like, okay, now we're excited to like rent a house somewhere and take the baby and like go, you know, do do vacation differently for a little while until we're able to get back to the things that once the baby can do a long haul flight, we can do that. You know what I mean? Like we understand that there are going to be changes that we have to make, but we still want to have that change involve the kid in the same direction that we were already going in. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think it's just like, there are people who are doing it. Like we know people who are doing it. So it's not, I think people, 
there's this fine line between being extremely honest and like trying to warn you, you know, like that's what yeah. most people, their, their intentions are pure. It's like, I mean, are y'all they don't though? have, I think so because it's like, y'all don't have kids yet. So y'all don't really know, but like, I know y'all have this idea in your mind, but don't set your expectations too high because this is the truth. Like, right. I, or maybe I thought that too until I had kids. Like, it's kind of like this, um, it's like people feel like they're trying, to, they're helping you out by not letting you kind of be in your little bubble. Yeah, I feel like, and I think this is my thing with the perception of having children. I think that a lot of us, a lot of people take on the the status quo of what it means to have a child. And that's the perception that once you have a child, that everything else is over with, which means they take on, I guess they take on that perception for themselves and is you don't realize it's your fault as to why you're not doing some of the same things you did before the kid came right instead you're like oh i have a kid that mean that means oh well life is over i just gotta do what i gotta like do like i for have the, to give you know like everything and is that's going the, that's the perception the yeah and instead instead of saying no nah, that's not gonna be me exactly nothing's wrong with that like you can it's okay like it's it's 100 percent your fault if you have a baby and you end your life. And right. what I mean by end your life is mean you stop doing the things that you once loved because you had a child. That is 100% your fault. Right. Um, I would say you let your life stop, not you end your life. Yeah, okay, it's a whatever. less um, harsh. <laughs> That's how I talk sometimes. Um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it is. Like, you, you, people, people don't understand that telling me I'm the wrong person to say, Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Get it all out now. What am I getting out now? If anything, it's just going up. Like it's kind of like with marriage too. People will say the same thing. Like I mean, that's the whole premise of having a bachelor or a bachelorette party. Like let like get everything out now because once you get married, you're basically trapped. Like that's how it seems. Right. And there was this TikTok going around that went viral. We talk about this all the time. We actually have a podcast on it from like a while ago. Of, Is marriage hard? And it's like people just, they will project about every single thing in life. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's so important to be very careful of who you take advice from because you will end up absorbing so much and then that becomes your reality yeah. because you've let that. You, you let know? that be your, you let someone else's words become your reality. Yeah. And really, you could have just lived your own life and experienced your own marriage, your own relationships in general. Like, Right, just your life. Like just yeah. <laughs> like for once I would challenge everybody to like for once see how your life is going to live out for a month without comparing it to someone else's without thinking that oh one, one two and three told me this like let you, you know see see how things are for you just for one month. Right. See what like believe in yourself for one month enough to say I'm a I'm going to take what I believe and let let's and see what put it, it into action. I guarantee I don't want to say I guarantee, but I guarantee that <laughs> you're going to be confidence enlightened. Boosting. Yeah, like you know, like, oh, I yeah, do want to. I can do this. Basically. Ask you something though about preparation because I think preparation has a lot to do with the success of anything. Yeah. Whether it's preparation for entrepreneurship, preparation for marriage, preparation for kids, preparation for buying big things like a house or a yeah. car, like if you're not prepared, Ooh. you. You com you really really increase your chances of experiencing more challenges than you yeah. would have if you were prepared. Right, and that's the thing. It's like preparation doesn't mean that you're not gonna face any challenges. It yeah. just means that you're a little bit more aware of the challenges that may come, yeah. or you're a little bit more prepared to actually face the challenge. Yeah, you put yourself in a position to exactly to I guess grasp what's coming. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to ask you about preparation for children because um I feel like it's so commonly heard. We hear it all the time. Like it's never the perfect time or you're never going to actually be ready. What do you feel about that in the lens of how we are? Like just for us, oh, do you I mean, feel like we were, pre we are prepared? I feel like we're prepared. Why? Um, I, I think once I realized that 
us trying to think the right time uh, or us trying to wait on the right time, once I realized that us waiting on the right time will never be because there's no, I don't think there's a such thing as the right time. Or like the perfect the time. The perfect time, I yeah. should say. Like, once I realized that wasn't a thing, that's when I realized we were prepared. Mm-hmm. I think once, um, you know, there are challenges we have experienced. I feel like those challenges have, um, I guess, exposed, like, oh, no, you're ready. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, it may not just be for a baby. It just means, like, you're ready for that next thing. That thing you may have been scared to do, that, that, that step you've been maybe uh, scared to take. You know what I'm saying? I feel like some of the challenge that challenges that we have experienced has said you're ready. Yeah. And ready just means that you've prepared enough to take on this next step. Yeah. You know, to bring on this next project, to bring to to have a child. Like I think that's what preparation means. Exactly. I feel like no one is 100% ready for what's thrown at them. Um because the best experience is life, like yeah. when it's there. Um, I think I'm a hands-on, so yeah. I'm 100% positive looking forward to being hands-on with the baby like to learn because i feel like it's nothing like your own child anyway but with that's how i am am with anything like in school i couldn't i couldn't just do a test i had to like really be in it touching it to to learn yeah. giving me a standardized test that's like giving me this child's book and said mark the bubble on which one you think is right it's, it could be a hundred ways to be right on um, how to take care of a baby or whatever, how to be have a successful marriage, how to have a successful business. Like that's how I look at it, hands on. Mm-hmm. Until I touch it, it really don't mean nothing to me. Yeah. Um, and I cannot wait to once we have the baby to give my take on it then. Yeah. Um, because I think going into things with a positive mindset changes all the things in the world for you. Exactly. If you're going with that negativity that you that we've hear or that we've heard, then I I 100% expect challenges yeah. because if I'm taking on what everybody else been saying, then I'm 100% waiting on all the challenges. Right. And I don't think I'm going to get out the challenges because it's people we know that's 70 years old still talking about it's kind of like they still like, dang, you make it seem like you should have never had kids. Yeah. So you basically after you have kids, I'm not trying to live the rest of my life feeling like I had this burden just because I had a child mm-hmm. and your kid is grown. Like, what's the point of that? You live in a, to me, it seems like you live living a bit of a miserable, miserable life in that yeah. way. I don't know. And I think for us too, preparation is just like very tangible things yeah. as well. Like I, in my ideal world, we're both home, like working. From wait, wait, home. I got, I got one thing. I, there's this, uh, there's this other influencer that, uh, reached out to me a while ago. They also have a podcast, but mm-hmm. their um their daughter has a um I don't I I don't want to butcher. I don't I'm just going to say she has like a medical um condition, condition mm-hmm. and it requires 24/7 um I guess surve- not surveillance but like care. 24/7 right. care. And to me they I see them traveling. My thing is it's really up to you whether or not you let your world stop because of a challenge. Yeah. Challenges come up every day. Right. It's either you're going to bathe in those or you're going to conquer them. Right. So that's kind of how I look at it. And that's once I saw uh, their stuff, I was like, man, I don't see how anybody else out here is complaining. Yeah. Like, now I I, and I know for a fact that they're experiencing challenges that it's like, wow, I couldn't imagine. But at the same time, they make it very known we live a great life. Yeah. And we're giving our daughter the best life possible. And that's I think that's the goal, to be able to give your child the best life possible, no matter what the circumstances may be. Right. Like, that's the difference, your mindset toward, you know, whatever comes your way. Right. I would say, I would say for me, preparation is that, like, definitely the mindset part, but also, like, tangible things and I feel like people a lot of people don't feel like they have as much control as they do yeah so for example like if you end up having a baby I'm not saying mistakes don't happen however (laughs) there are a lot of ways to prevent things from happening and I also think simply having sex comes with the potential outcome that you can get pregnant so if your life is not in a position to where you are ready for that, right? Then you you do have control to just simply not have sex, right? Um, 
in most circumstances. I know there are some ex extreme circumstances that do not have control. However, I would say that for us, it was like we were extremely safe until we were ready to not be safe. Yeah, we got to that. Even that, the pregnancy scare, it was like I was just being paranoid. Like yeah, we, were we were being, being very safe. safe. And like, it's not to say that you can be extremely safe and still not get pregnant. Yeah. Um, but we were, I was like, even if I do get pregnant, like I am, we were in a position even back then where it wouldn't have been ideal, but we were going to make things work. work. Yeah. Now, and, you know, now we can say, you know, like we will, will, no. Now we are in a different position. Yeah. In all ways. We have a home. We have secure finances. We are even like, as soon as the baby is born, we're opening up investment accounts for the baby and yeah. doing all of these different things so that when they're our age, we don't have to worry about paying for a wedding, paying for, yeah. you know, all of these different things. And the baby can just have what they want. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I think preparation looks like how you want your life to continue to go. Right. And for us, I do think that we, over these last almost four years that we've been married, have done that. You know, it may not, it may not have been like, okay, we're doing this because in three years we want to have a baby. Um, but it's like, we're doing it because we're, this is the path that we're looking to go right. on. And I think a lot that. of we knew that one day we would yeah. have children. And I think <laughs> a lot of people look at people whose lives do continue, and they're like, "Well, they're financially set; like they don't count, or they both work from home, so they don't count. Like it's not fair. I still have to go into a job. I still have to make ends right. meet. I'm, uh, you know, whatever. Like it's like kind of this mindset that." They You're, don't count. You don't because count because you did what you were supposed to do. Yeah, you prepared. And I'm and not even saying I'm not going to say you did what you were supposed to do, but you you don't count because you took control of your own life to be able to. You you're in the process of creating a life that gives you the ability to, to stay do home, those things. Exactly. Do, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's the thing that I'm saying. Is that's that the mindset we to do those things. Created the life that we have, so that when we do have a family. We can continue the onto the on the path yeah, that we want to go. Exactly, and it's just really that simple. Yeah. It's like control the things that you can control, and you have a much higher chance of having your desired outcome. Yeah, exactly. It's really just that. And to me, most I won't say most. A lot of people, when they have children, is just kind of haphazard. Like, oh, yeah. I got pregnant. Like. And I'm really not in a position where I'm ready to have a baby. But obviously, when that happens, you make it work. So right. making it work and like being in a position where you're just like still exceeding in life are two different lifestyles. Yeah. They're two different lifestyles. They're two different mindsets. And so it is, I'm sure, difficult for people to grasp, for a lot of people to grasp what we're saying yeah. because- your life just looks different. Yeah, you but, know. But even so, like even if you do have a child, when you're not necessarily, when you haven't prepared, I'm not gonna say when you're not ready, but when you haven't prepared, it's still on you to to not to prepare going forward. Well, I mean, yeah. the way I look I think, at it is, I just, you you may you may not be financially stable, you may not have a home, but not only do you have that nine months before, you have. However, you have that time before and you have that time after to be, to do what you need to do to get to that space. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's not a challenge, but the difference is you're not willing, you're not being willing to take the challenge. Yeah. And beat it basically. Well, I think our society just overall doesn't value preparing in general. Like most people don't prepare for their day. They just wake up. They just, just go get going. Day. Yeah. They don't know, they don't really have a focus or an agenda for the, for the day. day. So imagine having a whole child, which is probably one of the most challenging, life altering things you could do and to just fall into it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like even with entrepreneurship, it's like 
you have a much higher chance of having a successful business if you have a hundred thousand dollars to go into the business yeah and you have some type of business acumen and you maybe have a mentor that you've connected with in college that you know you've built this relationship with or you have you've prepared right whereas like somebody who just lost their job and is trying to make something out of nothing you're in two different two different places right you didn't prepare for potentially losing your job yeah so now you have to figure it out right and i think with i think it just it's an equal like it's equal (laughs) it's everything yeah and i think people who value preparation our lives just look different yeah and that's a mindset that you have to have and i i just i don't want people to think that we're being insensitive i just think it's the simple fact that your mindset has the ability to dictate what the outcome of certain yeah. things are. Not because you're just oblivious to reality, but because you're willing to be solution oriented and right. think of and and lead with positivity. Yeah, I, I think too, even like having to put the disclaimer of being insensitive. I don't even think it's insensitive. I think it's. I know you were gonna say something about that. I just, I, I'm <laughs> just. I'd be so sick of well, putting out disclaimers. I mean, no, I'm just saying like. I feel like that's also what's wrong with our society. Is yeah, like overly sensitive. Yeah, it's like you can't. Basically, you can't have experience success without putting out a disclaimer. Right. And I'm like, why am I sorry about something that I decided to do? Right. Exactly. Like my thing is people are, it's almost like people are happier if you fail at it versus like, oh shoot, I know people are mad that I'm succeeding. So let me put this disclaimer out there. Yeah. But it's actually really interesting because I have a friend, her name's Olivia and she's maybe a few years older than me, multimillionaire, built this massive house, like super, super successful has a beautiful family is an immigrant who moved from uganda and she is just she's like on her way to be a billionaire that's her goal and her whole thought on kids was shoot i'm about to knock these kids out early she She had her kids she has four kids she's in her early 30s and She's like, I want to have them early while I'm like I think she just active what, and yeah, she's yeah. probably thirty two. Yeah. While I'm like young and active, and so like in my thirties, I can like be focused on like my goals because yeah. they'll be self sufficient. And now she like, and it's not that. Don't get it twisted. She was focused on her goals while right. She was. Kids, she was. But now grinding. this is the home stretch for her. Right. But now it's like, all right, this is like them years that yeah. I can really, really, really focus and. She's in her 30s, early 30s, and she like has a chicken farm in <laughs> Uganda that she has to go to. She works with all these different governments in Dubai and in Africa and all of these different places, and she's traveling a lot. She's away from her family a lot, but it's a sacrifice that she's like, I'm making this sacrifice because I know where I came from, and I know where I'm going, and I know where I want my kids to be in the yeah. position I want them to be in. And so to me, parenting... I see people like her and it's not to say that my intentions are to be away from my child for like months on end because I'm doing work. But sometimes if that happens, like you have to know the bigger picture. And I think I appreciate seeing parents in action where they don't sacrifice their dreams and their goals for 18, 20 years because they're raising kids. But also, because I would say this. I because, say, wait, okay. but yeah. because I think it's very important for your kids to see you in action. Yeah. And for your kids to be able to look at their parents and be like, I, I don't necessarily want my kids to think of me as having sacrificed my desires for their for sake. I want them to see that I am like doing for their sake. You know yeah. what I mean? Not yeah. like giving up so much. Yeah. And it's like a lot of times parents will be like, well, or I, had to, on them I had to stop doing this because, you know, we had to get y'all through college or we right. had to do this. Like we couldn't take vacations or we couldn't yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it's just like the cycle has to stop. Yeah. So that's just where yeah. we're like. But I was also going to say too, like, um, even in our particular situation where we're going and even what we're seeing um, now, like this year, like seeing what 100% looks like, even like now, like when you travel, because, you know, 
some some trips I wasn't able to go on for whatever reasons, like I might be working or it just doesn't make sense. But now it's you're like, talking about when I travel for work. Yeah. Oh, okay. But now it's like, oh, like even having the baby, I'm like, oh, all right. Family Me and trip. the baby are right. like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I think that's also another way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes if that's what you want out of your life for it to work, that's what your baby gets to see. Yeah. Um, and I think like you, you said it in a long version, but to me, like that's the simple thing. If you say, well, I travel too much. Okay. How can we all go? Yeah. You may not go to the meeting, but Hey, at night you get to lay down with your baby. Exactly. You get to go to dinner with your baby and right. your, and your spouse. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you're making something work that others don't believe is possible. Yeah. And that's where we're different at and don't agree with a lot of- Because we just believe it's possible. Yeah. Like it is simple. So, and it's going to work. It is. <laughs> yeah. And we're so excited. Like, I feel like this is just so, it's going to be just so even much more fulfilling. Yeah. Being able to know that our actions are molding the perspective of a whole nother human. And I, and I, and I think to date, how things have always gone for us is that when we say we're going to do something. It may not be in the way that we thought, but it the results show mm-hmm. every single time. That's like, why we're a dream team. Yes. Like I at this point I, I can only keep betting on us because I've seen it over and over again work and happen. Yeah. Like I don't have no other reason not not to believe it's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um even even from the times of, of failure, like it still worked. You know, right. so you know, you don't you don't win every day, but the goal is not to win every day. The goal is to win in life. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I to me, I don't. I'm not even looking at the baby to be a challenge. That's just me, though. I know mm-hmm. that's not what people say or think about their kids, but like, I just don't view it as a challenge. I, I just think it's yeah. another. I think that's kind of along the same lines of like, do you view marriage as a challenge? We I don't. don't. Yeah. We view marriage as. It's the best thing. It's amazing. (laughs) And if we face challenges, we're facing them together. So it's not that challenges don't come. It's just we don't look at it as we're a challenge. Yeah. And so I'm sure Which is why we won't look at the baby if the baby is a challenge. Yeah. I'm sure (laughs) it'll bring its fair share of adjusting and change. And it's going to change our world. It is. But that is... For the better, you know, yeah. like it's going to change our world for the be- in the best way possible. And yeah. of course, we're going to have like long nights. Maybe if our baby is like, <laughs> a, you know, up at night or some people, everybody's baby isn't though. Like some yeah. people's baby sleep good. So it's just like we're just, just praying for like the life that we want. Yeah. And we're believing that God will provide that for us. Yeah. And we're going to put the work in to yeah. get it. So period. It's simple. Well, all right, you guys. Yeah. This was good. This I'm is... glad we chit chatted through this because me and Cameron, we like, it, of course, like when we did the baby announcement and we say certain things and we just get, it, and it's not even like to rebut comments. It's just no. like this is how we think. Like this is our perspective on it, and we appreciate all of the insight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, we don't take everyone's insight. Like we take it with a grain of salt if it's yeah. something that just doesn't resonate with us. But you're fine to comment it. We, we don't care. Yeah. Um, but that's just how But we also are. too, just like just like, you know, people pro- provide insight if that's the word. Um that's that's what it is. It's insight. Yeah. Like And honestly, our our take might not res- it, resonate it, with everyone either and that's everybody, hey, our <laughs> TA for everybody and everybody <laughs> TA for us. So, right. But the thing is, too, to be able to share a different perspective that I, that I think is not common so that and my my hope for even even doing the podcast is that may just maybe like, all right, that that was kind of thought provoking. Yeah. Um, and while we're we're going through like figuring it out, too. But the difference is sometimes some people need to hear it from from others sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we are both pretty self-motivated in a lot of ways. And I don't know. I think this is just. This is th- my biggest motivation outside of just um, continue to have these g- great conversations is that I do think um, the having the ability to reach someone, if it's just one, um, without like a, I guess, sob story. Because I, I, you know, I told you, I used to think like, I don't really have a story to like latch on to. Like I didn't, I'm not, I don't, I don't really feed off of like anything negative that I've really experienced. So like, I think now I'm just in that, 
that mode of like, hey, you got something to share. Share your perspective. If it helps, cool. If it doesn't, hey, it's out there. Right. Like, Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs> this is, I'm not giving advice. It's just, I'm trying to share my experience through life. And for the first time, I believe that my life experiences matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do. So, yeah. So, that's how I look at it. Be careful. You're yeah. like brushing up against it. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Like, it's just, I think it's just as simple as, like, experience your life for what it is. You don't have to take everybody's two cents. Yeah. <laughs> and make it your reality. Because a lot of times we'll take in so much and then we'll be trying to regurgitate someone else's blessing. And you're trying to, you'll be stuck figuring out, okay, why is this not working for me? Well, mm-hmm. you didn't, you didn't do this your way. Yeah. You took something that you saw or read or whatever the case may be. And you tried to make that yours. That's it not is, yours. That's why you're unique. We're all unique. That's why we're individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why sometimes individuals come together and they make a dream Yeah. and they make it work. Yeah. So, hey, if you rock with me, then you rock with us. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Um, I can't wait to meet my baby. So, I know. Yes. We're excited. We'll see you on All the right. next one. Bye.